Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today we will be focusing on the topic of the post. We will be focusing. We will be continuing to focus on the topic of the post-war treaties, and today we will be looking at Wil President Wilson's 14 points, and the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk between Russia and Germany. So let's begin. In January 1918, President Woodrow Wilson of America states his 14 points. These are meant to basically act as the foundation of the treaties that would eventually be enforced on Germany. And the main points was open diplomacy. This meant that no more secret alliances could be struck up between countries, aka Austria and Austria Hungary and Germany or Serbia and Russia. And if you understand how First World War starts you understand that, as Serbia ended up in conflict with Austria Hungary which dragged other countries in. So this point was to prevent major conflicts coming out, even though they were initially started between two countries. Another one was all con was freedom of the seas. This basically meant that anyone could have access to the seas and could trade freely, no matter who which country they were trading with. And also, all countries should have access to the sea. So this would actually become a major problem when it came to the Treaty of Versailles, when it was limiting Germany's territory, as Poland did not have access to the t to the sea at the time. And in fact, it would be a reason for the creation of the Polish Corridor. And another one that was very important was the adjustment of colonial claims. This was also called self-determination, or at least that was part of it. This was basically meaning that colonies could shape their own future. They could choose who would lead them. They could choose whether they would remain under British or French control. Now, let's sort of set the scene for this. For hundreds of years, Britain and France had been the major colonial powers in places like Africa, America, the Caribbean, South America in some areas, Canada, the East Indies, India... So, to suddenly discover that you are being demanded by a relatively new nation in the world stage, which is America, especially a country that does not have many colonial powers, is telling you to give up your right to rule, is quite a major problem. And in fact, this would be one of the main reasons of friction between Clemenceau, uh, Lloyd George, and Woodrow Wilson, since they would not get along due to the fact that they wanted to remain in colonial control. Although other points in the 14 points do state that there would be a return of French colonies, as some French colonies were lost since the Germany did actually have colonies in Africa um, and fought against British colonies and French colonies, although not very effectively. And another major point in Wilson's 14 points was the creation of the League of Nations. And in fact, that would be one of the many things that created World War II. The League of Nations was designed to stop further conflicts, as it was meant to work very similar to the United Nations. I won't go into too, depth, in too much depth on what the League of Nations is, is that is for another video in another topic. Then, following this, in March 1918, the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk is signed between the Germans and the new communist Russian government. Now, this takes Russia out of the war. This is quite a major moment, as it proves to be a turning point for Germany in the war. However, it comes far too late, and we will explore that in further detail in another video uh, later. But, if the Russian Revolution hadn't happened, there would have most likely been no treaty of this, and in fact Russia would have probably kept on fighting. Now this is quite important, as it not only gets rid of a lot of Russian territory, it also makes gives the Germans lots of access to land they previously didn't have, and allows them to recall troops, but we'll get into that in another video. But these are the main points of the Treaty of brest Russia had to recognise the independence of Ukraine, Georgia and Finland. They had to give up Poland and the Baltic states of Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia to Germany and Austria-Hungary. And they had to secede Kars, Ardahan and Batum to Turkey. Now it's important to note that by seceding these, they were already just giving back 
a land that they had taken from the Ottoman Empire, since the Ottoman Empire had been in major collapse since um, previous wars. Um, and to we will look at that in potentially a future topic, as the Ottoman Empire has quite a lot to say about what was going on in these Baltic states. But at this period of time, they had been declining rapidly. And in fact, they had, in a way, declined to what we see as modern Turkey, in a way. Not much further forward than Istanbul. <laughs> but these territories given to Turkey were, in a way, just returning what the Russians had previously taken. Now, the total losses of all of these territories being taken was around 1 million square miles of Russia's former territory. That is a third of its population, or 55 million people. The damage that this would have caused is major, as most of the territories taken by Germany were in fact the major population centres of industry and agriculture. As if you look at population maps of Russia at the time, you can see how most of the population is closer to Germany than they are Alaska in the sense of where they are. Western Russia is the heavily popular, popular area as it is better conditions for everything. Whereas the more wilderness areas of Russia, Serbia, Siberia, that sort of stuff, is not very populated. A majority of its coal, oil and iron stores are completely gone. Now this is also a major problem as, under Lenin's new government, it is the idea of the industrialising. As we mentioned in the last video, Russia was extremely backwards. And in fact this treaty does not help at all. And, according, and, till in Lenin's own world, he bitterly called the settlement that abyss of defeat, dismemberment, enslavement, and humiliation. And you can really see how it does, those words don't do it justice in a sense, as this would have had major impacts if it hadn't been for the fact that it did not last very long. Because, under the Treaty of Versailles, all those territories that Germany would have gained, gone. And under other treaties, like the Treaty of St. Germain, gone as well for Austria-Hungary, or Austria and Hungary. All of these territories would have been taken by the treaty and split up. And it would have created many of the Baltic states that we have today. So, you have to imagine yourself in this situation. You are a Russian farmer and your land is suddenly no longer yours. You're free from the communists, because maybe you didn't like them, or maybe you completely supported them. But you're no longer there. You're now in German territory, subject to German law. And although you won't have to deal with it for much longer, it is still a major defeat for you, as all of a sudden, all of your agriculture is going towards a German war effort, just when you thought that the war effort was gone for you completely. This would have been major blows and it set Russia back further and in fact it would have presumably resulted in Russia not being able to regain much of its power But if it had been allowed to continue. But it wasn't under the Treaty of Versailles. The Treaty of brest was completely ruined. And in fact this treaty was a way to justify what would happen later with other treaties as the Allied powers were allowed to go and say that because of what you did to Russia, we can impose the harsher sanctions on you, because if we had lost, you'd have done it to us. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, hopefully it's shorter, by just about a minute. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. Um, sorry for the lack of videos, been a bit busy. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe.